What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you are watching DaVinci Reacts. Today, I'm going to be getting into a video that has been long since requested. There has been a, a, a I don't know if they're subscribed to me or not, but they've requested that I do a video on the Spanish Civil War for a very long time. At first, it was an epic history request, I believe, but then um, it moved to feature history. I've already said I'm kind of iffy on doing uh, epic history because I've heard stories that people that react to their videos tend to get copyright striked. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd rather not take any chances. So until I get like word otherwise, I probably won't end up reacting to their videos. But I have watched Feature History's videos before. And funny enough, usually their videos tend to be like uh, multi parts. But this video is just one video. So that's well, it's good for me. <laughs> but um, anyway, this is the Spanish Civil War, which is something that I have been interested in checking out because um, as someone who is a fan of history, but only recently started to like really get deep into it around the time I started doing YouTube and everything. Um, it's crazy to me to think that Spain as a country hasn't really, like for a European country, it's rather young. Like for a long time, they were occupied by a, um, a, a caliphate. I forgot which one it was, but for a long time, they were occupied by um, um, a Muslim tribe of some kind and the Moors and things like that. And then the Spanish Inquisition. And then at some point they turned fascist. I don't like it, it's interesting. I know hardly nothing about this like, actual Spanish history. So, I mean, the only thing I really knew about Spain before that was the conquistadors. And I made a dumbass comment in one of my previous videos uh, about um, when the New World was discovered. And I believe it was the Falkland uh, oversimplified video. And I, I asked the question, like, why, did, wasn't, why doesn't Spain um, occupy anything in the New World? I, I, was, I think it was about the British Empire. And I was like, well, the Brit Britain had an empire. France had an empire. I don't think Spain had an empire. My dumbass. Obviously, I knew that Spain was the first ones to uh, arrive in the Americas and colonize pretty much the entire east coast of both continents. Um, so I don't know why the hell I said that. That was just a dumb thing that I said. Like I said, at some point, I have to make a video just dedicated to the mistakes that I've made in other videos. So I can just like, I don't know, it's like a blooper reel kind of. But anyway, let's go ahead and check this out and see what it has to offer. Um, yeah, I, Spanish Civil War. Here we go. A war I will have ideology. Feature History's channel a war that featured at the end of this. So. Technologies and tactics. A there will war be a link. Such human and societal cost, it would never be forgotten. No, no, the, the other one. There you go. Oh, if I missed that entire first part, there was a joke there. Before I do, I just wanted to clarify, I will have the original link in the description box down below. I will have a link to the channel at the end of the video, the last 30 seconds, an icon will pop up. If you click on it, it'll take you to their channel. You can watch, like, comment, all the other good stuff. And the link is on the bottom in case you're, you want to watch it without me pausing or talking over it. Or if you're a reactor and you want to try to get the source uh, material, that's where you would get it. Technologies and tactics. A war with such human and societal cost, it would never be forgotten. No, no, the, the other one. There you go. Okay, so it was, it was a, a bait and switch. Hello and welcome to Feature History, featuring the Spanish Civil War. It was a war that caught the eyes of politicians, media and creatives around the world. What began as the Spaniards' war was co-opted by fascists and communists of the world seeking to show the merit of their might. A proto-Cold War, if you will. The seeds of this war were planted prior to the reigns of communism and fascism. They were planted in the 19th century. If Just a quick note. I, n I never understood like the, the, the symbol of fascism, that little axe weapon. It seems like it has no practical use whatsoever. So I'm I, I'm guessing it's just a symbol, but I don't know the history behind it. It doesn't. I mean, it just looks weird. I don't really know. What's somebody can give me some information on it. If you'd like to get a better idea of the bigger picture, you can check out Sweeney's video on the history of Spain. 
Also do that because I told you to. Might have to check on. that out. The 19th century was a turbulent time for Spain. Opposition to the monarchy resulted in pushes for constitutional rights, liberalism, and even a short-lived republic. Combined with the destruction of the empire by the US and revolutionaries, the Spanish state was weakened and the populace disunified. Alfonso XIII, King of Spain, would launch a disastrous war against Morocco in the 1920s. This would lose in the majority support of his army, so we could just sprinkle that on top of the irritated civilians. Alfonso recognized this and so just up and left the country in 1931. The local government proclaimed itself the Second Republic, headed by Niceto Alcalá Zamora. Niceto and his committee promised change, a step into the 20th century, trade unions, land reform, secularization, women's liberation, and autonomy for Catalonia and the Basque Country. So many revolutionary ideas at once left the right wing feeling alienated. The actual introduction of these ideas like was slow. He's the communist side, Painful. I guess. Slow. Every single change left the right more concerned and the left further disappointed. Had a great depression and the changes became slower. That sounds exactly like how it is in America right now. Exactly how it is in America right now. I mean, there's not really any change, but the right in America really thinks there's change going on, even though there isn't. And the left is very disappointed by what the uh, <laughs> what the government is doing as far as like not doing enough. I mean, hell, all you need to do is throw a depression in there. Right, more concerned and the left further disappointed. Had a great depression and the changes became slower. The anarchist confederation named Confederacion Nacional del Trabajo, or just CNT if you're not a show-off, would rally strikes and when the Republican government cracked down, they alienated the far left. To protest, the CNT refused to participate in the 1933 general election, which, funnily enough, led to a result they were unhappy with. The right-wing Catholic conservative SEDA party, under Jose Maria Gil Robles y off. Won a majority of the seats. The reforms that actually did get done were beginning to be reversed, and the military and cabinet began to be purged of leftists. Never a good sign when the CNT the term retaliated purge. in 1934 when they rallied up anarchists and communists alike to rise up in Asturias. The young general Francisco Franco was sent in and commanded the talented army of Africa to cross the revolution. The streets turned to battlefields. The workers were eventually defeated army and suffered Africa. brutal reprisals against them. The gruesome scene foreshadowed the shape of things to come. The bitter tale sparked outrage and helped unify the left. Communists, anarchists, socialists, and plain old liberals realized to combat the right they would have to stand together. The Popular Front was formed. Reactions from the right intensified as well. Some believed a Jewish Bolshevik conspiracy was afoot to spread communism. The fascist Falange Party was formed by Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera. Politics was getting very violent and partisan very quickly. You couldn't just disagree with someone anymore. You had to silence them. The 1936 general elections would result in a narrow Popular Front victory, leaving the government. Just this this point right here. Um, because, like I said, I'm I'm trying to like connect it with things that I know, and I know right now America's very polarized as far as their partisan politics and everything. And at the end of the day, it's like if you feel that your position is so convincing, then you should be able to express your opinion, and with only your opinion alone, be able to change people's minds. If you feel like you have to silence them or hurt them or something or intimidate them in order to to do things your way then chances are your position is a piece of shit like you should really if if it's so obvious to you then you should be able to to express it and convince somebody if you can't convince someone then likely your position isn't that convincing the 1936 general elections would result in a narrow popular front victory, leaving the government in favor of the left. President Niceto would be exchanged in favor of Manuel Azaña. Primo de Rivera was arrested and the military was reorganized in an attempt to suppress chances of a coup. Jose Sanjuro, a man who attempted a coup in 1932, began conspiring another. He made deals with monarchists, traditionalists, fascists, nationalists, anyone and everything right wing. The warnings of disloyalty were popping up left, right, and center, sending the government into a tizzy. On the night of July 12th, things went from bad to worse. Falange gunmen shot down a socialist police officer in the capital of Madrid. The police scattered out to find and arrest anyone even slightly related. They'd asked the monarchist, Jose Calvo Sotelo, to come down to the station with them. A station he wouldn't reach. These killings made it clear this would not end politically. The coup was ready and the government was not. The people demanded to be armed, yet the government did not wish to do so as to admit they'd lost control. Seeing as they'd lost control, the people armed themselves. Mm. 
The military coup launched in Morocco under Franco's command. Generals across Spain would rise up in every city. The police would reluctantly work with the leftists. This cooperation would result in the coup's miscarriage. Cities across the Republic would either fall or not, beginning to draw the front lines to a new bloody civil war. This would be a line between the Nationalists and the Republicans. The Nationalists took Seville, Castile and Leon, but the government held on to Valencia, Barcelona and most importantly, Madrid. The botched coup became drawn out. Soldier or civilian, man or woman, you were fighting. Whether that fight be one of tyranny versus freedom or righteous Christians versus godless communists. The scene was quite surreal. You'd wake up, eat breakfast, fight on the front lines and then be home for dinner in bed. There was a darker <laughs> side as well. Nationalists would yeah, metaphorically would so. execute any suspected well, of dissent. Let me clear that when I say I would hope so. I don't mean I would hope so as in... I hope there's bad stuff happening. I mean, I hope they're not turning war into a damn, like it's just a nine to five. You just clock in, go to war and five o'clock, eh, whatever. Time to go to bed. See what was on this uh, this week's episode of uh, This Country Has Talent or whatever the hell else. Thing. And, and the leftist Republicans took it upon themselves to destroy any person or thing that represented the old ways. They took this as an opportunity to instate their own revolution. This would create some tension within the Republican side. The government wished only to survive, but communists and anarchists wished to instate their ideas of a utopia and the disorder. Their only common interest was hatred of nationalists. For those nationalists, the death of their mastermind in a plane crash would throw things a bit out of whack. A junta was established. Sounds a lot like the Rwandan with genocide with the plane crash. This was, oh, very temporary. <clears throat> Stepping back for a moment, the side seemed fairly even. The nationalist trump card was their disciplined army of Africa, currently in Morocco. So how would they get the army into Spain proper? With Italian and German transports, of course. Their rebellion had the support of Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, and to a degree, Portugal. It would start as supplies, but it would escalate to volunteers as the war progressed. Franco's army of Africa would arrive in Seville and push north toward I'm guessing the Italy, Africa is cutting a place through enemy in territory Spain and somewhere. brutally crushing them in the Battle of Merida in August. The nationalist territory was connected, and Franco rewarded with the title Commander-in-Chief. When he rescued his allies in the Siege of Alcazar, that title would be bumped up to Caldeo, the unquestionable military head. It would be Franco's work that unified the like many elements of the nationalists. Countries. The Republicans lacked this unity. The old government's cabinet would be thrown out in favour of a communist one. The communists attempted to unify the Republic in their own image. The anarchists viewed it as an affront to their revolution. Madrid would come under siege in November, and the new government retreated to Valencia. Only the passionate men and women remained to fight, adamant that the nationalists would not pass. The fervor attracted those from all around the globe to come to Spain and fight for these ideas. It also attracted the Soviet Union, who began sending aid of their own. Britain and France were anxious about tossing their hat into this quickly becoming proxy war, and so agreed to a pact of non-intervention. Regardless, Madrid stood, unyielding for years. The nationalists held siege, but diverted forces to try and take everything around Madrid. They spread across the south, and in 1937 marched into the isolated Basque country. This region would become famously subject to the bombers of the Luftwaffe. The Republicans would remain firmly on the back foot after this defeat. They attempted some offences in 1938, but every 10 metres gained would cost them 10 gallons in blood. Franco mm. chased the Republicans back across the north, pushing them to the sea and cutting their territory in two. Wow. The Republicans fought back in the Battle of Ebro, but to no avail. Perhaps they could hold out until the inevitable world war broke out, and then they'd have the support of the Allies, certainly. Well, Britain and France's appeasement of Hitler would lay a nice consistent shit on that idea. Morale shattered, they retreated. The war was decided. Now the only thing left was to lose. 1939 dawned on an invasion into Catalonia, the anarchist homeland. Barcelona fell on January 26. In Madrid, the Republicans could still not agree. Anarchist and communist hostilities spilt out over the peace treaty. A civil war broke out within a civil war. The anarchist mm. Segismundo Casado threw out communist Juan Negrin and began negotiations on the behalf of the Republic, but Franco accepted nothing less than unconditional surrender. Madrid fell on March 26, and Franco announced victory on April 1st, but no, it wasn't a full. Some Republicans were lucky. They escaped or somehow hid. A lot did not, dying by either their own hand or a soldier's. Franco, as the absolute dictator, kept in check the many factions he had once unified as nationalists. He had attempted to negotiate with them, but if pressed he had no qualms purging them. The country was centralised under him, tradition and religion held supreme. The economy was rebuilt and resurged at the expense of the worker. 
The monarchy was revived in 1947, Franco of course, regent for life. What did you think he was going to step down? He selected his heir as Juan Carlos de Bourbon in 1969, and upon Franco's death in 1975, Juan Carlos I ascended to the throne. The king would reform Spain, reviving democracy and modernizing the country. The consequences of the civil war no longer lingered so heavily over everyone. Mourning could finally begin. The sorrow and sheer human cost of the war are still deeply remembered and felt to this day, and with that sorrow continues some hatred. The sometime violent division between left and right remains, not only in Spain, but the world. It's just too easy to call your opponent a dangerous communist or corrupting fascist. So we could attempt to discuss policy, debate ethics, and reach some kind of compromise, or you could just punch someone in the face, cause he's a Nazi, I swear is it. Well, wasn't that just a pleasant bedtime story? I'd like to thank Sweeney for doing this little old collab with me. We were talking about this both when we were at 100 subs. I'm That's the efficiency the other one. of feature history for you. A big wet, sloppy, and unwelcome thank you to the patrons, and personal thanks to the good old bum scrubber, Steve Graham, Zedfer, and Thrace Vega. If you want to know what the next video is, you can check on Twitter, or Mines if you're woke AF. Now if I don't go now, mummy is going to yell at me, alright? Okay, again. If you are familiar with history channels on YouTube, you know the type of stuff they have to deal with. Um, YouTube's community guidelines normally stipulates that certain things are acceptable depending on context. And one of those bits of context is education. But a lot of times they do not honor that uh, guideline. There are, there are a lot of people that even though they fall within those lines, YouTube will still demonetize their videos, strike uh, their channel, uh, things like that. So one of the best ways you can help a history channel is to check out their Patreon. Um, sometimes they have their own websites that they upload videos on. I, I mean, if you want the links, check out the, the original link in my description box. It'll take you to the original video. And in the original video, in its description box, you should be able to find a link for the Patreon, as well as any other possible uh, websites that you can show your support for them. I would honestly recommend it if it's a channel that you enjoy, feel free to go and support them in some way. Uh, Patreon, you do not have to be signed up for like a contract or anything. You can just sign for a month and then cancel it immediately after if you want to. Um, I mean, I have a Patreon. Of course, if you want to show me support, you can do that as well. Um, but <laughs> if you want to show these history channel support, the best thing you can do is sign up for the patreon um i will have to check out that history of spain video because that's going to go all the way back and that'll definitely help me out with uh at least a, a general guideline on uh the, the like key events in the country's history also i do know that feature history is but one source of information of course if you're going to try to study these subjects the best thing to do is to go online and do research from multiple different articles and videos and things like that and try to get all forms of context, all perspectives, things that you probably won't be able to get just from one source. Um, because a lot of people, they'll see a video and they'll be like, Oh, this doesn't cover everything or oh, this is, this isn't right. And I just want people to know that when I watch a video, I'm not just looking at it going up. Oh, this right here is 100% correct. And everything that goes against this is wrong. Like, I don't know. So I'm willing to accept, like, I probably don't have the answer. Um, the whole left, right thing, as he said, right now, nowadays, it's just as, as deep. It, the thing is though, it doesn't have to be, but the problem is that most people that tend to get into politics nowadays, they tend to, associate the other side with like the most extreme form of of that perspective like if you're on the left you're all the way on the left and you're a communist and if you're on the right you're all the way on the right and you're a fascist and it's like i don't think half the people that tend to throw them terms around even know what the hell they are or what they mean and I, it has a lot to do with um uh the internet that's what i believe Social media has made people extremely lazy when it comes to getting information and uh, trying to understand context and nuance. It's a lot easier to just, you know, throw a hashtag around and uh, 
pin all of the people you don't like into one category and put yourself in another category. And if anything goes outside of that little monolith you created for yourself, then that person or thing is completely dismissed and thrown in, out of the, the, the tribe. I mean, it's going to be some rough times, but at some point it's going to mellow out because I always have a theory that when it comes to uh, social change, no matter what it is, there's society works a certain way and then the pendulum will swing towards change and then it'll come back as a reactionary response to that change. So it'll like something life will be a certain way things will change something will knock that pendulum over here to 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 change it but then they'll go too far to one side and in response to that people will like over respond to it and then it'll go too far to the other side and then it'll come back to the other side again in response to that but it won't be as far as the first time and it'll keep going back and forth until eventually it settles in the middle to something that is like the the proper way we should should handle it <laughs> like it's never subtle it's never something that like change never comes understandably whenever something happens it always overshoots and then when people try to like take care of that it always overshoots in the other direction and it keeps on going and going and going until eventually uh, you, we've had so many different conflicts that, that it's like, okay, well, if we want to avoid all that stuff, we have to do this. And it finally settles. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, we're going to keep seeing these reactions. Like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it. Like, when it came, when it comes to the, uh, like the last 100 years or so, there's been a lot of change. I'm speaking from an American's perspective because, again, I'm just getting into history in other uh, countries and stuff. And this is all my own opinion. Um, it's really not really based on anything other than like my own observations and uh, things like that. But this is what I believe I've picked up. The last 100 years or so, there's been a lot of change, uh, so much so that out of all the times we've been alive in human history, these last hundred years have shown, have, have changed things so much that we have never seen anything like it in, in, in our history. Like when you talk about women being able to get the, the, the rights to be equal, when you talk about gay people being able to get the rights to be equal, when you talk about the abolishment of, well, I can't say the abolishment because it's still happening, sadly, but when you talk about the, the the condemnation of like slavery and things like that around the world, when you talk about uh, people that are different races and different ethnic groups being finally treated normal over, over the past hundred years, all that has started to change for the first time in history. Um, and I think that with that change happening so quickly, I think that that is the reason why nowadays we're seeing a really hard response from uh, radical right wing factions, whether it's uh, the, the the Muslim extremists or whether it's the resurfacing of people that share Nazi ideology, when, whether it's um, in America, all the communist sympathizers and not communist sympathizers, the <laughs> the. Um, confederate sympathizers and uh, white supremacy and things like that so that's a response to everything that's happened within the last hundred years and like obama becoming president and it like the pendulum went this way for the the change now it's going back this way for the 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 extreme right response and now you're starting to see it come back over here with the extreme left response where everything online is like a witch hunt and if you are accused of something if it goes against uh the social idea of how things should go then you're automatically labeled this and 
people attack you and they want to go after your job and they want to go after this, that, and the other. And don't get me wrong, some people do deserve it. But the problem is when you attack everybody and you say everybody's a racist, eventually nobody's a racist because you've called everyone a racist. The, the term has been watered down to the point where it doesn't work anymore. Like you only have so many chances to misfire until eventually your your cause is has lost its um its meaning like i've already said before like when it comes to things like black lives matter i support the movement but the organization itself has had too many blunders at this point it's like they've done too many things that hurt their own cause and in the end it no matter what the message of the movement is, people are going to point to the organization and go, well, that's the the, the problem, right? And, and they completely ignore the actual purpose of the movement. So it's like, you only have so many times to, to, to cry wolf before people start dismissing what you have to say. Even if there's an actual wolf there, like you said it so many times, they start to like dismiss it. So that's the pendulum going back to the left with the 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 witch hunting mobs on Twitter and stuff like that. And it's going to eventually come right back over again. Like all the movements that started off with good purposes behind them, like uh, Me Too and all that other stuff, it, it overshoots. And now anything that, like they have situations where you have some people saying that like, if a person has a, a bad date, they call it like sexual harassment or whatever else. And they try to go after the person and it's like, eventually it's going to lead to the others, uh, the pendulum swinging the other way. And then now nobody's going to be taking accusations seriously again, even though that's wrong. What you should do is be right in the middle where an accusation is made. It should be treated seriously. It should be investigated and whatever the evidence leads, that person should be held responsible no matter how powerful or how influential they are. Uh, that was the thing that led to Me Too was the fact that people that were in high positions of power could do stuff and it was never taken serious. No matter what the accusation was, they never faced their day in court. And that's where it should have led to that. But then it overshot it to a point where people were, like, even when an allegation would happen, before it was even investigated, people were already make up and up, making up their minds and saying this person was guilty. So eventually the pendulum is going to swing again and it's going to end up becoming accusations are not going to be taken serious because because what's the word I'm looking for? Because conclusions are made too quickly. And then eventually it's going to go over here. Then they're going to do something crazy as hell too. Like I said, probably going back to like, not only saying accusations are based on nothing, but also attacking the people that make the accusations. And then eventually people are going to see how fucked up that is. It's going to come back over here, but it's not going to be as strong. So hopefully the next time it'll be uh, where I said it was, we're taken serious but you don't come to conclusions until after the evidence and things like that, hopefully. Because right now it's too far to, to this side. Like I said, the fact that I even said we should wait for evidence first before we make conclusions, there's already some people that I guarantee you will look at this and be like, oh, you're, you're, you're crazy, you're whatever. You, so you won't believe someone if they make an accusation, to, which is not what I said at all, but they don't care because that's not what they're looking for. This is my own observation, like I said, though. I mean, I cover a lot of controversial topics. I'm not really the best idea if um, I look and become a big YouTuber, but <laughs> I'm just being honest, I guess. I mean, like I said, these are my observations. If I am wrong, feel free to go in the comment section and convince me. Just like I said earlier, if you feel your position is so convincing, then you should be able to get that across to somebody else and be able to convince them based on your own arguments themselves you shouldn't have to intimidate or accuse them of something or anything like that 
to get them to go your, along your way, you should be able to just say it. Like, for example, I saw one discussion on uh, Twitter. I see it a lot, but I'm going to point this one out because it, it, it was egregious specifically for me. And I was actually planning on responding, but I keep forgetting that my Twitter is now tied to my YouTube channel. And I don't want my YouTube uh, or my, my, not my YouTube, my, my Twitter. Yeah, my Twitter is tied to my YouTube channel now. So I don't want to tweet something and then like have it constantly like blowing up my followers feed because I'm going back and forth with somebody on Twitter. But um, like there was this discussion involving um, I believe it was Space Jam, the new Space Jam movie that came out. The whole controversy with Lola Bunny and, you know, how people were talking about how they changed her look and this, that, and the other. And some people are pissed off. Some people think other people are overreacting. And one of the people that was making an argument for Space Jam, even though they weren't even, I mean, not making an argument for, making an argument against the new Space Jam, even though they weren't addressing the Lola thing, the person they were arguing against threw that in there as like a way to straw man their argument. Like, oh, well, what are you just, uh, just trying to get your rocks off to some animated rabbit with boobs? Oh, like, like, how, what type of person that make you? And the whole time I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute, the person that is like saying that to them, this is a person that, you know, the typical uh, Twitter account with all the flags and stuff in their username and, the, the pronouns and all the different activist causes they support and this, that, and the other in their profiles. And I'm just thinking like, okay, so you're supposed to be this tolerant person that that is open and wants everybody to live as honestly as they are. Whether this person is a furry or not, which I guess is what you're trying to accuse them of, why are you trying to attack them for it? Let's say they are a furry. Why, like, why is why are you trying to 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 shame them into like i guess pointing them out as a fur like what like, i would just love to see somebody be like okay yeah i'm a furry so the fuck what what's your point am i supposed to feel bad about that are you trying to shame me into not being a furry like what 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 what's the point here because my theory is a lot of these types of people the ones that make those arguments not just not people that have like the profiles like that because there are some people with profiles like that and they're perfectly fine but the people that make those type of arguments where they try to like oh well does this make you feel uncomfortable because you really like it or some shit like that like the people that try to force you into um like certain types of categories that they think is going to embarrass you the people that tend to do stuff like that, in my opinion, I think that they're just bullies in disguise. Like they're, they are just looking to attack someone. And because nowadays just attacking someone outright is considered wrong. They try to find, they try to put a cause behind it. And if, as long as there's a cause behind it, they can attack someone as much as they want. Like as much as I don't like Donald Trump, for example, I'm not going to attack his looks. I'm not going to attack his uh, stuff that, is outside of his control. Like I'm not going to attack his, how his hair grows or something like that's not really something that he controls. So it would be wrong of me to like attack him for his looks when you have people online that are just like going after him for the way he looks and things like that. It's like, but you're somebody that if somebody online was attacking someone else for their looks, you would, condemn that and you know that that's wrong but here you are doing it to them simply because you don't like them what does that make you like it doesn't matter i get that donald trump has attacked people for their looks before too but does that make you right by stooping down to that level no so why are you doing it again it goes back to this point and i'll say it again if you feel like your position is so convincing and the other side is so wrong, then you should have no problem convincing somebody with just your argument alone. There should be no need for personal attacks. There should be no need for uh, straw manning. There should be no need for scapegoating or whataboutisms or anything like that. You should be able to just, on the principles of your own position, be able to argue and be able to convince someone. If you can't convince someone, then accept that your argument isn't either foundationally sound yet 
or it's just a bad argument to begin with. It's one of those two. Um, if you feel like it's not foundationally sound yet, then you need to go and, I guess, read some books to try to figure out a way you can properly express it so you can convince somebody. Or, you know, maybe you got to come around a, a different way so you can try to paint the picture for the person better. But at the end of the day, trying to convince someone should be on you, not on them. You shouldn't be trying to twist their arm to, to understand what you're trying to say. You should just be able to say it and they should be able to get it. And like I said, if they don't get it, agree to disagree until you eventually feel like you have your argument down enough that you can convince them. But um, yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting discussion. And online, you'll run into a lot of people that have picked up their first uh, like or have have jumped into politics recently, don't really have the full context or nuances and things like that. And they'll just argue based on surface level and even when their position has been exposed and their argument has been completely destroyed instead of being honest and be like damn you got me i'm uh you're right i had a bad argument that's that i believe the wrong thing <laughs> and i mean i'm even if they don't believe like even if they aren't convinced they should be able to at least admit my argument wasn't that good you're right you got me on that one but no instead they'll just like run off Either they'll either just flat out block you or they'll run off to some other thread or some other Twitter uh, uh, tweet chain or whatever the hell they're called and make the exact same argument somewhere else. Even though you just pr uh, showed them their argument was wrong, they'll just go somewhere else and just keep throwing an argument around uh, as if you were ne you never proved them wrong uh, because to them it's not about being uh, right or wrong. It's about getting an agenda across or getting a certain position across or something like that. that that's what it's all about but yeah i mean be honest if you can that's what the internet needs the most honesty if you feel like you're wrong admit that you're wrong um yeah have arguments that are based on principle that's the reason why i don't that's why i don't condone personal attacks in my comment sections if you are having an argument with somebody and when i say argument i mean like a debate with somebody if it gets down to the point where you're like name calling and stuff let me know Le leave a tag or something in your comment uh hashtag da vinci or some type of hashtag or something let me know it'll come into my folder i'll be able to see it and i'll be able to filter through the, the thread and see like whether it was called for or not. And then if it's, if it's something that's just like egregious, I'll just ban the person. Um, if not, I'll try to give some type of warning to let them know that this isn't the, the channel for it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, I hate seeing people personally attack other people for, for believing different. Like I said, convince them. But anyway, hopefully you've been enlightened. If you haven't, then feel free to go in the comment section and let me know what you think. Um, I have no problems admitting if I'm wrong in a, a position in my argument. Um, I also have no problem agreeing to disagree if I feel like you think that I'm wrong, but I, I'm not convinced based on what you said. I can still accept what you said and you know, be willing to listen and can go back and forth with some different types of ideas and things like that. And, you know, try to find some type of middle ground. So don't hesitate to go in the comment section. And again, if somebody jumps in the comments and they attack your position, like personally, or they're just like being just irrational with what they're uh, like, with how they're addressing it to the point where you feel like they're personally attacking you, let me know. But anyway, I'm going to give you the deuces. I look forward to seeing you in the uh, comment section. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and share. I cannot express enough to hit that like button because it's very important. It helps the channel with uh, being able to be easier to be found on the algorithm because um, it's all about trying to please the YouTube algorithm. And again, support history channels uh, if you run across them, no matter what they are. Uh, if you enjoy them, be sure to show them support in some way. Anyway, I'm going to give you the deuces, and I will see you guys later. Deuces.